Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brooks Nodes Baseball 30 Breakdowns in 30 Days. They were finally on to the NL Central. I actually getting close to winding it down here. Um, and we're starting with the Chicago Cubs, a team who was the lovable losers for, what, 100 years almost? Mm -hmm. uh, or over 100 years, I guess. But they did win the World Series back in 2016. But if you want to see the last time they won the World Series, you have to go all the way back to 1908. And their best player that year was, do you know? Mm, we will be Keeler. I don't know. Mordecai Brown. Oh, yeah. Three finger. Yep. So he was their best player. And he, um, just to show you how long ago, he died in 1948 and he was 71 years old. So uh, it's been a while since they uh, since they won the, won the World Series. But um, they were competitive for a few years there, starting in 2015 through 2020. 20, they made the playoffs every year with the exception of 2019, but they still had a winning record. But after their 2020 season, they really took a nosedive, uh, finishing 71 and 91, then 74 and 88 last year with David Ross at the helm. Um, not much more to say about the record, so go ahead and jump on in and we'll get going with uh, the Chicago Club. Well, when you talk about their acquisitions, I need an oxygen hit to get through all this. <clears throat> their biggest one would be Dansby Swanson, shortstop from the Braves. Uh, Jamison Tyon, the pitcher from the Yankees. Uh, Cody Bellinger, why? Um, Brad Boxberger, pitcher, relief pitcher. Tucker Barnhart, good catcher. Uh, Michael Fulmer, pitcher. Uh, and Eric Hosmer, why? And that's pretty much the main ones. Complete rebuild here, overhaul, I guess. Sounds, sounds like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you go right to the rotation. I guess Marcus Stroman's probably going to be your your main guy. 25 games last year, 350 ERA, 115 whip. Sinker slider guy. But he's always been a guy that's supposed to have a lot of potential. And I don't think he's ever been a star. He's just been solid. Then you got Jameson Talion. Started 32 games last year. High uh, ERA, 391. Whip was 113. That's good. Uh, strikeouts, um, gets lost strikeouts, home runs allowed the last two years. Oh, I'm sorry. Scratch, scratch the strikeouts. 50 home runs allowed the last two years is good control. And it looks like the rest of the start rotation for him here. And as of today, will probably be two left-handers, uh, Drew Smiley, Justin Steele, and then don't forget Kyle Hendricks. He's been off and on a good pitcher. And, Keegan Thompson got some starts last year, so he'd probably work out the bullpen, spot starter kind of guy. Uh, closer, after they traded Robertson, who the, who's the Mets closer now, uh, it was Hughes and uh, Roman Wick. Neither one of them was sp uh, spectacular. Wick, Wick in 64 games had a 169 whip. Brandon Hughes is in 57 games. He got eight saves, 109 whip. So he's a fastball slider guy. Then you get Brad Boxberger. Who pitched in 70 games last year, decent numbers. Manny Bull Rodriguez, big fastball guy, uh, but he walks more than he strikes out. That's not a good sign. Michael Fulmer, 67 games, uh, 137 whip. Michael Rucker, and and uh, he'll probably be a long guy. And then I wanted to mention Javier Assad because I didn't know much about him until the WBC, and he pitched for Mexico, and he looked pretty good. Uh, he pitched a little bit with the Cubs last year, so he should be there. Um, anything you got to say about the pitch? I think it's just a very average staff at best, and the bullpen's questionable to me. Yeah, well, I mean, it's very. I mean, you said Drew Smiley is in their staff. I mean, yeah, he's been everywhere. Yeah, and he's not really performed very. Well. I mean, he's serviceable, I guess, maybe under the right circumstances, unless he's innings eater. Um, uh, Stroman, he's more of a social media guy, really, than a baseball player. Uh, yeah. Tyon, it's just, I think it's a subpar step for sure. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I don't as far as the much. bullpen goes, subpar. But when we talk about their, um, when we talk about their, uh, their record this year, it'll reflect all that stuff. So we can go jump right on in to their catcher if you'd like, Tucker Barnhart, who's the young guy in the room, which is odd at thirty, almost thirty-three years old. Two-time two Gold Glove winner, but his defense is starting to go the other way. Yeah, well, he's thirty-two. Um, Never been much of a hitter. Two forty-five career hitter. 
Yeah, but it dropped to 221 last year, but he didn't play that much, not even 100 games last year. Um, doesn't have any power anymore at all. He's hit 13 home runs, I think, in the last three years combined, so nothing there. Um, Go probably be the back of him. He's old, too. Yeah, you're not you're not going to get much out of him. But moving on to first base, I have Eric Hosmer. Why? I mean, I understand him, but why would you get him? His power is nothing anymore. He's a 268 hitter. I'm hearing that Matt Mervis – may take over first base rookie before it's all said and done because Hosmer's wore out his welcome in a few places like I mean he always, in Cincinnati. I feel like people get like always give him a short end of the stick. I thought I've always thought he's a solid player, but everyone always acts like he's the terrible player. I, I don't think he is. His war I mean he's never had a good war. Um, <laughs> but I mean ever. His best war he ever had three point eight seventeen. But um isn't he a good fielder? Or was uh, he may have been but uh, he's getting up there. Yeah, unfortunately. But second base, I have Nico Horner. Yeah, that's what I got. Nico, um, 281 last year, 10 homers, 20 steal. He had a 4.5 war, and he's good. De- he says he's a good defender, too. I know that. Um, Short he- base acquisition in the offseason for him. What do you got to think? What do you think about Dansby? Well, Dansby's good, really good defensive player. Um, I think he basically had a career year last year. He had a lot of help around. Him, not going to have this year. It wasn't um, even as far as war goes. It wasn't even close. I mean, that as far as that last year, his second best year. The good news for him since tw- I mean, since twenty eighteen, his war has gone up every year, every year, every year. Now, I like it. it took a big jump last year. His strikeout, he strikes out a lot still. Uh, he, he's just a two fifty five hitter for his career. Hit two seventy seven last year. Um, he's 29. He's still in his prime. I think his batting average is probably going to fall a little bit um, to what right. it normally is because he doesn't have Atlanta's team around him anymore, and that's a big. He's going to have to be a leader here too. I don't know that he was in Atlanta. Yeah, he's he's the main guy now in Chicago. Um, one of their what six new guys they have in their offense here, but. Yeah, they got- yeah, we'll see how he does. He's always been a solid ball player, but he's been this is his third team now, so that might be a little telling what people think of him. Right. And if you're done with him, moving on to third base, I'm thinking Christopher Morrell. Or Patrick Wisdom. Patrick Wisdom doesn't hit for – he's had like one halfway good year. I mean, he's in his 30s. He was he was supposed to be a big deal. He never was. Couldn't cut in St. Louis. Um, Morrell, Morrell, kind of utility, but he had good numbers. He had like 16 home runs last year. If Wisdom is your starter, um, he's the he'll probably be the worst offensive third baseman in baseball. Utility to get Nick Madrigal, uh, he may work his way in there too. Yep, I saw him in there. Yeah. Moving on from Madrigal, we my computer's running slow. Who do we got in the outfield? Center field, Cody Bellinger, good defensive player, good defensive player, but he's declined offensively for three years in a row. Now, I heard at one time they said it may have been an injury, but, I mean, three years has been injured. Um, I think that was a gamble, you know. For sure. And then left field, you got Ian Hat, gold glove winner last year, um, 271 average. So, you know, nothing special in offense, um, good defense, obviously. And right field, you had, uh, was it Seiya Suzuki? Oh, well, uh, right. Yeah, he batted 262. But he got better as the season went on, so give him, you know, a little time to adapt. Um, well, man, and you get Trey Mancini could work in there some there, first base and DH. That's basically who I'm I'm thinking. But I, I don't think it's nothing spectacular. I mean, you got a lot of ifs. Mancini, he's definitely on a downside. Uh, Bellinger's on a downside. Wisdom's on a downside. Uh, Bernhardt's on a downside. Uh, Hosmer's on a downside. I mean – uh, I don't see a lot there, unfortunately. They, you, I was reading early on, oh, they did a lot. Yeah, well, yeah, okay, we'll see. But I don't think they did anything spectacular. You don't think they did anything to vastly impact their overall win totals? If they got 81 wins, I'd be happy, shocked and happy for them. Yeah, well, we don't expect them to get that many wins, and we'll talk about that in one moment. As far as our farm system goes, looking at the rankings, or is there anyone else you want to talk about before we move on with prospects? No, that's pretty much it. Yeah, so moving on to their prospects, we have them at number 16 spot. 
Um, <clears throat> which is obviously just just a bit in the back half here, but they're yes, their number one prospect would be Pete Crow Armstrong, who's an outfield prospect. Um, obviously. Man. It messed up trading him, I believe. I believe he's a star in the making. Five cool guy. He's still young, so I guess there's still time to see. But I read, uh, uh, I think it's a major league site that they said he may worm his way into the lineup late this year. Well, I I, I could totally see that based upon how we think they're going to finish. Mm-hmm. But the mm-hmm. second prospect would be Kevin Alcantara, who is a six foot six, one hundred eighty pound. Um, outfielder. He's in a uh, single high eight right now. He's originally a Yankee signing. Um, but they said he's, when he came out of the Dominican Republic, he's one of the top rated players that there were. So he's something that definitely look forward to. And last year, um, he did, he's only in a low A last year. However, he did hit 273. Um, and I know that level is pretty hard to hit. Then you got Brendan Davis, another outfield prospect. Um, so they are pretty set on the outfielders. And one thing about Brendan Davis, which is probably not the best thing last year, for some reason, he went from rookie to high to triple A last year and hit horrible in each one. So I don't know why they kept him up. Didn't they, was he the one that got in trade from Cleveland, or am I thinking the wrong guy? Let's see. Brendan Davis, no, he was a Chicago draft pick in 2018. He's 20. Uh, explain why they play there and, like they are. Oh, they kept moving him up last year, and he never hit over 200. He only hit 180 total last year, which is odd. Then we got our first pitcher. Their number one pitching prospect would be Cade Horton, who was a first-round pick last year. No stats. He didn't play at all. Um, he's a two-way prospect where they just project him as a pitcher. And then moving on to the number five, we've got Hayden Wesneski, um, who was a 25-year-old who's already made his debut up top. But he's a pick for the Yankees in 2019, a six-round pick. Um, so that's their top prospects. I, I think the top five – any any comments on any of those guys? No, um, I figured let's move on to the manager. Yeah, what do you got for him? With what he has there, I mean, how can you judge him? You know, I mean, it's the old chicken crap and chicken salad theory there, you know? Yeah, hey, I, I think they're kind of a team like, uh, and I, I'll use this example. I know we probably use this team a little too much, but this team obviously we're very familiar. Can hear you. I can hear you. I think we can use the Orioles as an example because um, they are. Um, t- 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 sorry, I broke my train of thought here. Um, they they just kind of try to piece together older players, and whether or not that's going like to work. The Red Sox. Yeah, exactly like the Red Sox. So I think they'll try to piece together some older players, and um, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I don't think they're going to be too good. That's why we projected them to have 76 wins and 86 losses. That's probably pretty fair. Another typical Cubby year. Shame for yeah. the fans there, right? I know they, they got blessed with a World Series trophy, so they can they can survive it. But um, any any final thoughts before we get going? Uh, no. No, I guess that's it with them. I mean, uh, no reason to really go on. Uh Looking over the roster here, there's no one else to really talk about too much. Uh, and that's pretty much it for me. Yep. Well, yeah, come back tomorrow. We'll be talking to Cincinnati Reds, so it gets even better for us. And, um, John, let's just sign off. And remember to like, share, and follow. Let us know how we're doing and uh, everything like that. Well, that's all for now, folks. Catch us next time on Brooks Knows Baseball. Good night. Good night, Tom.